so it's recording now so um, the idea from starting from this document which I just increase the uh, size of the presentation probably if it's too small it will just uh, think it will show you the entire uh, list of uh, table of contents if you oops decrease the size a bit so if you have more space you see those changes actually on the side if this table of contents is opened and so your first task is to reorganize this structure of these headers which are actually chapters I changed this already for paragraph uh, but also for lists stuff like this, to mirror this structure so our chapter is tutorial uh, there is the first se section is markdown and it's divided into paragraphs lists which has a subsection of numbered list just by adding these to mirror this structure uh, just by adding hashtags in front of these headers so the idea is clear depending on the number of hashtags you indent or uh, move these yeah headers into the structure or into content You just add some, hit Control S, and see the changes. I just like Sorry, I didn't show it. Uh, yeah. This one. This yes, should look like this. Mm. Yeah, so like, like like this. You see? Okay. So just, or if you prefer another one, just add more indentation. You can do this up to six. Is actually uh, allowed. It's like with a HTML syntax for header one, header two, header three, up till six. And this is just mirroring this tags actually this HTML tags oops there's one two So you already. If it's not perfect, it's uh, not necessary. But that you have an idea. So depending on I structure my content with this hashtag title, and depending on the number of hashtags, I indent this uh, at this. Just for illustration, you can show the connection between the preview and the actual code by clicking on a certain location and to jump to the corresponding. Uh, something. Ah, no, it's not working with it. Ah, if you can do this, it's a bit complicated. Control and double click. You can. Uh, control, double click. You can. But the easiest way is just like if you go to the next slide. I want to go to this specific part. You just double double click onto it, and it will jump into the uh, line accordingly. So it's. You can navigate between your code, or it's not code, between your markup language and between the presentation. So, for me, it's a bit difficult. Control, double click. Uh, and here is a bit easier, just double click uh, to the specific line. Right. So, if we're all done with this, so it's actually the the idea of markdown is that's easy to write and easy to read and every block that you generate uh, stands 
for its own. And if you do something like a paragraph, for example, it's always divided from other blocks uh, by an empty line. So this is just like you see that there's a difference. I add a, add a new line. We compile this and this will be a separate paragraph. If I remove the space between them, just that, this will be added automatically to this paragraph. It's just like also for uh, later, the other blocks are simply separated by new lines. So it's easy to read, uh, it's easy to write, it's easy to separate. You can actually, if you have also like this, so this is another paragraph. I compile this again. So it will just gener generate this, like or visualize this, like this way. So it don't care about the amount of spaces. It just has to be one empty line at least. So, but you can organize your content as you like. If you want to use two or three lines for certain cases, you, you are free to do this. So actually, yeah. So the task probably if you try this out for this one uh, was to add simply by yourself, add a few paragraphs. Uh, but if you have done this, uh, we can go on and just like the idea is clear, right? So just like, nothing fancy, just like if you would just think about this, if you just would have a, have a typewriter and a paper and just and you try to organize your content in the old school way with a typewriter, this would be something similar or the simplest way. So if we go to the next one, lists. Lists are the same like you use this or oh, increase this. It's better to see. But just like again, if you use a typewriter, you probably you can start with a star or asterisk, a minus or a plus. So if I add a minus in there, it doesn't care. It will generate the same for you. So just like an enumeration and a list. So you add in this case, you don't have to add any a new line it will uh, recognize so there's another uh, bullet point but if I want to add another paragraph for example to this one so you have to keep in mind you have to use the indentation so that it belongs so the part that I'm writing now uh, another important aspect will be rendered as a second paragraph uh, but within this uh, bullet point. So you, you can also add as much as paragraphs or other markdown blocks as we'll, we'll see later into it. It's just idea, but just keep the indentation. And the same goes with, if you want to add a uh, bullet point list uh, to your bullet point list, actually it's done in the same way. I just separate them by a new line and I start a new bullet point list. Probably it's easier to use pluses or minuses to switch between the indentation but what I then have to keep in mind is just like this requires one two additional spaces and then it's added uh, like a sub bullet point list into this field so that's indentation and empty lines so this is the basic idea of markdown so and we add some additional features so so far okay um, yeah. I'm trying to add the, the, the other paragraph, like the, the first one, the list. This one? Yeah, the another important aspect. But it's still combining it to the first line is a blank. Ah, the blank one, yeah. If I do it like this, so it will be one paragraph. Okay, yeah. So just like. Okay. What about the, the other bullet? So, and the thing is, another bullet just below there. So, uh, that one. below this one? The last one. Uh, below the last one? Yeah, those two bullets. Those two, you want to add either, yes. like you can you do as a star, another bullet, like in this case, or if I want to do it uh, at this back. So, we'll do it like this. What if it wants to be like the other one? Sorry? Two. Want it to be like the, the two that I made it. Ah, uh, no. 
so they are marked in the yes. preview. This is just a, yeah. It ah, no, it's not highlighted. It's just because I uh, uh, marked it like this. So, yes. so. How did you do this? Like add that? You see how we added that? Add another bullet down there. This one. Yes. So uh, it's just one. Uh, uh, it uh, it looks different, but this is not a new line. It's just if I decrease the size, uh, it's actually a one liner, 80 and 81. Uh, it looks like this. It's just a long line with a line break that's uh, rendered like this. But yeah, if you want to add this, you can also add a plus. Uh, if you want to, nothing changes. So it's part of this. Ah, but if you want to add another bullet point list, probably to this one. Uh, what I'm doing wrong. Oh. So we have to take care of the spaces. If there's, this has to be a new line and not filled with spaces. So we added another bullet point list, and this can have. Oops, I just. This is hierarchy of bullet point list is a benefit of markdown. So, and this goes on and on until uh, your browser don't know where it puts it into it. It's just like so. It's just like the star or asterisk, minus and plus. So these yeah, are the. But if it's like a full circle, empty circle, or a box. Ah, yes, yeah, this is predefined within the style, but I think you can choose also, uh, if you are a bit into coding, another style if you want to and uh, change uh, the view. It could be s something else. If you want to, if you don't like the blue color, you can also switch to. Green, reddish one, or also add another one. This will be recognized, and there's another custom style, and it will render the content within your with your fonts, with your colors, and stuff like this. So, yeah, and because it says here Dreamweaver editor style. Ah, no, this is the uh, style if you are doing coding, yeah. and there's an editor, and you can use different types of syntax highlighting depending if you want to have a dark background or white background. And this is. This is deferred by the style. Oops. Yeah. Okay. To check this. It was interesting if you talk to teachers about the script and the application in schools, then they are completely become completely nervous by the black background of the editor. So normally we switch to a white background, mm -hmm. which does not transport that nerd image uh, <laughs> but for your guys it's no problem I guess. So as you've seen those I think you're all ready, mm -hmm. right? So we go on to the we have this bullet points and the other one is we just want to have a numbered list. So as you would do this probably just like with a number and a dot uh, and a space. So that's it. And you can basically add as much as numbers to it. Another number, hit control, and so you now you have, have like uh, if you want to do the same, you add, want to add another uh, paragraph or something like this. These are now three uh, uh, spaces to be in row, so it has to be in row always with an upper definition. Another para paragraph. So another one, but you can also, and combine this completely for free, you can add also bullet point lists. So the idea of Markdown is a basic simple blocks and you combine can combine everything that you wanted. So this one, I want to add some bullet points to the second one. I have to keep one, two, three, one, two, three, so that it's in row. And so this will be uh, 
a simple bullet point list here if I want to add some numbers uh, probably these could be numbers also so they appear like this or if I add some more indentation uh, like oops one two one two the, these become part of this uh, bullet point list so that's basically it and you can combine them reuse them the only thing that's a bit different to standard markdown is uh, standard markdown if I add number two or three for example in this case it will always render uh, this one for you with uh, starting with one two three four five so it doesn't depend on the numbers but in Lea script actually uh, so you could also add one 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 uh, those numbers have a meaning so if you want to create your content uh, for a specific part and you want to start with a third bullet or a third part or the second one and because you want to reorganize this you can do this just change the uh, uh, order of your numbers in markdown this won't work so it will always start by counting from 1 to n um, what about the wikipedia entry i also use uh, but it's uh, different. It's a, a yeah, wiki markup. I don't know how it's called. It's uh, similar but different. Same, same but different. For some. <laughs> so. so the next one is. This was one motivation for us to use Markdown as a basis to. Wikipedia is so successful due to the aspect mm -hmm. that they use a Markdown for describing their work, but it's a static web page. <coughs> Makes no sense for use, use it for uh, learning content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also found uh, a markdown cheat sheet. I copied the link in the LIA, yep. uh, in the ELA press. Um, so Where is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a basic markdown syntax. You can use it, it's the same principle. It's an open standard, actually. So now we want to add some basic formatting or highlighting of uh, text elements probably and uh, you can see there's not highlighted actually the only part that looks a bit different is this code so if you use those back ticks in my case uh, I don't know depending on your keyboard it's actually it's called a back tick so this might be look like complicated but this is just a piece of code where uh, which stays the same, it doesn't change, it reminds that this is a code and whatever is within there, uh, display it as it is. So if I want to use a bullet point list, probably, uh, test. So it will not display the bullet point list, but the syntax as it is. So this is just like an, uh, leave it like it is and don't change it. This is some piece of code that should not be changed or uh, adapted any in any way. So you can use this also for C code or to, to add some snippets. So this is just a basic code, back ticks. So this is just to remember. If you want to have something like italic, you can use stars and uh, uh, underscores or asterisks. And you simply highlight this piece of code by surrounding it with underscores. Probably that's better readable than to use uh, another stars so as you can see those specific part is now uh, in italic uh, I can also move the you just add this uh, for you the task is to add this uh, specific notation around your uh, main title of this bullet point or something like this but depending on within the one liner Ah, uh, the wrong one. Yeah, I just wanted to add it like in here. So depending on how much you surround, so this could be one word or multiple words, these are there's a highlight for italic and this you can see visually, okay, this must be somehow important probably within the code. So if you have something that's more important, uh, so you can see, you can either use two asterisks or two italics to surround this. So this should be bold 
you see the syntax highlighter already uh, shows this in bold but now we've created like a a bold thing so it's still text it's not html markdown we have to remember it's just like uh, this one seems to be more important than this one if i add this back So now it's like, and if it's very, very important, you might say, okay, but what do it? I just increase it by a second number. It's just like it uh, becomes italic and bold. So the same idea, just one, two, three. One, two, three. So we now have bold and italic. And if you, you can use this also to uh, embed different stuff. So important if I just want to have this in bold, so bold, but I want to have this italic piece, probably like this is the only one I want to have in italic. You can surround this also with stars. So it's just like uh, embedded or put into parentheses. So this is uh, italic uh, and the other one is just like circumvented with uh, two underscores. This is bold in this case. So you can mix up everything. This is the idea. So if, and if you can work around this, so everything that you using markdown is actually uh, you can use combinations of difference so we have now this bold cold block which doesn't use this stars actually but could you get those on your keyboard uh, it's on my keyboard it's uh, where the backspace is there's like an uh, uh, like uh, the accent uh, like, accent i don't know de accent de graph or something like this we just but you need to do also blank space and i just found it on whatsapp and it works perfect yeah. Yeah. So I find the icon uh, right, and it just on WhatsApp. It does? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, it works on Yeah, it works. Clean your room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love you uh, in bold letters. Uh, it's more impressive. It does. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's... Uh, that's it's very good. You should start with WhatsApp part. <laughs> Started with an interactive part, so it just so you have more laptops with you. Yes. And you help them. So that should work as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So don't lose time. Because you can also play around if you want to. If you want to have something uh, like with his tilde. Uh, where is it in my case? Hmm? You can have something like it's the same idea. You can have something crossed out. You use another one, you can have it underlined, and another one is crossed out and underlined. So the same principles. So we can 
play around with this by your own later. The only thing that I want to show you is that there's also some kind of mathematical environment. So it's not a part of there, but you can do it like with the dollar signs. Everything that's surrounded by dollar sign, whatsoever, uh, is basically the mathematical notation. So and you could use, I don't know if you used LaTeX before to write any mathematical formulas. You can just type in LIA formula, uh, just an inline formula probably. It would look like this. So if I compile this, as you can see, it's a beautifully uh, rendered formula. So you can, this, this, you can surround it or have it as a part within your text or paragraph. Uh, like in this case, so, and this uses the LaTeX, on our case, the KaTeX uh, syntax. Just try Lia formula, and you can use either inline or block. So it will, if you add this, it will add in. So this is wrong because there's slash some. Oh. Well, at this so the example is not the right one without back text but you can like uh, frac one over one minus x and this will generate a larger uh, an entire block by its own within a larger or bigger formula centered within the space but just uh, you don't have to write formulas now, it's just that you have an idea so that you can also use beautifully rendered formulas within your document. So in this case, you just have to look for KTech or LaTeX, which use a similar syntax. So just like developed by Donald E. Knut. Okay. So, but that would work in any kind of editor, so like in Microsoft Teams or in Google Chat or whatever. And uh, this one, uh, no, I think it's not. Uh, it's some part of the dollar notation is uh, now also in GitHub, so it was not previously uh, part of their markdown syntax, but it's something like a, a common use case or practice so some some started with a dollar sign for formulas uh, and embedded this stuff and the other markdown interpreters and uh, editors just uh, build up on this idea and reuse this idea so it's pretty easy and yeah so the next one you can have a look at it just if you want to highlight something like this you have probably seen this from an if I'm too fast, you just say stop or. What do you mean? This block quotes or this previ previous? Yeah. Ah. ah, I just want this was uh, I mentioned this earlier. You, if you want to get a general help, you can type Leah, and you can just like type Leah formula, and then go to inline block. It shows an example uh, that works, probably, and it just adds a basic stub of a formula. So you can change this. So, but the the. Uh, Formula blocks. It adds uh, too many. So, but this is something that we change within the editor. So there's just this backslash too much. You just have to remove. Uh, one of the backslashes, and if it works, we get another formula or something like this. So, but this is just like mathematical LaTeX style, something like this. So it's so you can use. And actually, as I mentioned, if you need some help, Lia text bold italic uh, bold two or something like this, 
you can add it like this you get your stop and you can yeah change it so basically you don't have to remember it but if you've seen this three or four times it's easy to remember so yeah. another one is and this is the idea is taken from emails I just like block quotes if you want to highlight a specific part of your it can be a paragraph it could be something else uh, you simply add those uh, larger or smaller signs or triangles before on this so this is if you refer to another email this referring to another email it adds automatically these uh, dashes so you can create a new uh, you can add another one so it's also separated by a empty space test so this will be another block quote and whatever we've learned so far you can add those pieces you can have this bold text into it uh, underscore bold blah it works so far it works pretty good and if you add this to the other one so this will be again one block right so it will be added to the ne next paragraph and you are new now using the same principles if i want to have this as a another block or something like this i just not an empty space but just like an okay this is a block and then there is an empty space or an empty line so and if you want to do this you can also nest those So now we have a block quote within a block quote. So again, this markdown idea, like with the bold and the uh, indentation bullet point list, also you can access this in within here, or we can create a bullet point list if we want to. But instead of... Uh, so you can create as many as you can. Yeah. Keep. So it's the basic idea it might look a bit complicated probably not that beautiful uh, depend on what you want to have on your outcome but it's practically practically the the yeah idea everything that you have learned we we'll use the markdown nest it repeat it reuse it copy and paste it and uh, that's it so the idea of these block quotes mm -hmm. is okay yeah. clear so the next part is uh, references so you can either if you want to refer to another an external URL or something like this or uh, to another image also uh, you can once do it this just by copy and paste the entire URL and the markdown interpreter will interpret this oh this is an HTTP this is a standalone URL so you can refer like this uh, to our documentation which is also hosted on GitHub. If you click onto this, so this will open just a blank documentation. So if you can also uh, refer to this if you want to it, but it's mentioned within the additional content. But then there is the other one. You see, this one is not interpreted. So it's in a code environment, but the basic notation for I want to have a named link. So now without, back ticks it's just like you give it a name this could be anything and uh, in uh, brackets and in parentheses you put the URL actually so as you can see I'll increase this a bit so we went from the code block if I recompile this you get a simple little link uh, which refers to the same oh, did I made a mistake uh, the car URL playground uh, it's the wrong one but I'll copy and paste this one so that's referring to the same document we can give it another name for example uh, script course at Hila. 23 so this one now again showing to the 
uh, referring to the documentation and if you've done it before if you want to highlight this link for example you can either you I want to space between the name and the, the link uh, no there is no space allowed because it, it keeps on bringing me the same the name of the the name and then together with the URL yeah You have to remove the backticks, so yeah. there's just yeah. otherwise uh, it's not interpreted. It's it yeah. just code, so it will <coughs> interpret. And so you can also style the content within, with everything that you've used so far. You can highlight this, make it bold, or there's another one for uh, making a superscript or something like this. So to name, yeah? yeah, within the link, or you can surround this probably also. <coughs> I want to have the entire link in bold, so uh, do it like in this. So you see, and again, so every piece in Markdown is combinable uh, with every piece. So it's just like it doesn't look uh, as beauty as it is, or as, as as beautiful. But it just again the idea. You can freely combine any formatting uh, to any uh, words, paragraphs, and this. And so, uh, what is now probably missing? Hmm? So this could be also like Google. So it's now pointing to Google, open it like this. But another thing that you uh, might want to, if you have one document, right, and you want to refer to another uh, piece or to another section within your document, right? So I probably within the links, I want to refer to the next section, which is called images. So how do I do this? With the internal links, uh, you don't use this HTTP. In before, you use like this hashtag and header. And then it's just like uh, images, the title of, your, uh, of the slide, actually. So I change this back to go to images so it changed uh, and then when I click onto this internal URL You're in so images? No. Okay, still. it will switch to the images right and it could be also like like we'll use uh, tables uh, go to simply rename it tables so it's uh, actually doesn't care if you using like es some uppercase it's just mm -hmm. will uh, interpret it in yeah lowercase go to tables so there's another link and we can go to either tables uh, go back or, or go to the image section so and this is yeah it's just the next one so repeat how you went on the images, how you set it to and go to, yes, that from that. From that? <coughs> mm -hmm. I just go to images, and this will refer, you don't refer to a, a URL, you refer to the, you can, like then, uh, the header images, or the section that's called images, images. so, and because we use this as our really title, okay. uh, it, uh, so if I change their name, images, this, for example, I put it Joel. Yeah. It won't find it. Yeah. You have to put on top the good job. Yeah. Okay. Drawing. But there's other, but this is not standard markdown, but in Lia script, because we are using numbers for sections, I could use this drawing. Mm -hmm. So go to images, uh, won't work. It will just uh, yes. jump to the first one because uh, yeah. there's uh, nothing that is found. What you can always do. Uh, 
you can also use this as the ninth section or something. If you start by the first section, it's the second. Uh, you can do this the same, and then if I go to images, it will yeah go to drawings. So these are two basic ways of referring. So you, you still have just to write, so go to open bracket, go to images first, close the ah, but the images is a, uh, go to some nice place. So this is just the title that you want to give it within the uh, document. So within the uh, link, but where it points to, it's just the what's within the parentheses. So it could be anything. It could be uh, probably if you want to put in a video into it, it would be uh, a data sheet. <laughs> Reference the name of the data sheet in the first the part, and then the link the link of the next yeah. part. So for the students, I already had some information about the page number in the data sheet, so they have very easy access. Okay, so you can do this tasks by your own. Try to highlight your links, probably if you want to, or experiment with different formattings. And I would like to go, so it's written out there, just the title without spaces. And the other one is, oh, I change this to drawing. So the thing is, if we want to embed an image, for example, of this, uh, Wikipedia image. So I add this as a link, probably also give it a name. If I click onto it, it will uh, send me to this image, right? It's just like a link to an image, to an external reference or whatsoever. And then the inventors of Markdown added something like uh, this piece of this link actually, if there's an image included and you want to embed this into your document, uh, this should be an important piece of code or uh, important reference. You just add an exclamation mark in front of it. So if you have a link that points to an image and you want to embed this, you add an exclamation mark in front of it and it will embed the image where it is. So this is the markdown notation for including images, just like an extension of this uh, link idea or reference. And you have to think, uh, probably, I don't have to name them probably, so just because it's not shown actually, right? So I don't give it a name or something like this. So it's not important, or you might say it's not important, right? Uh, yeah, the question regarding captions for accessibility. So yeah. This is uh, the idea that I want to uh, point this to. Now this text piece of text is actually used. It's not only for you uh, to remember what's the point of the content, uh, mark down logo, but this will be used as an alt text. So if the image is wrong, for example, or it's moved, or you have not a valid internet connection to load this, uh, this will load actually this or display this name, so there's something broken. But this alt text, as you might call it, uh, is also used by screen readers. So if you add some piece of uh, an image or video or whatever it is and embed it, you probably have a just add a short information. What is uh, what is visible on this image? So this is, might be not useful for you, uh, but for those people who use screen readers, so the. Uh, it's displayed in there for them so far. So the idea was that. Ah, and so what you can also do, raw content, so this is a wrong URL, or something happens with the image. Uh, if you can add this additional titles like in quotes, this is another, uh, probably not the best description. So in Lea script, this will be visible as an uh, description, yeah, caption, right? Uh, if I remove this, probably just like a link, 
Uh, can you see this? Yeah. This will uh, highlight mm -hmm. as a title and actually so for, with more information to the link. So in this case, but in layer script, we just simply reuse this as an uh, title. And if you can go to Wikipedia, probably. Da Vinci, some drawings of Leonardo da Vinci, it was beautiful. Probably don't know what this is. Uh, but want to embed such another... This image, uh, probably a, a large size, so it's way too big, right? So I copy the URL of this image, go back to my to follow your script if I add this uh, URL I want to embed this picture whatever it is you see markdown is pretty small if the picture is too big for the screen the script will automatically render it for you if it's uh, or to put it to the right space it will uh, check out what uh, what are the dimensions of the image actually and will place it accordingly if you increase it, uh, probably, so it will check if the, I would say, the dimensions, no, not dimensions, the uh, ratio still works, so that it's fully visible, actually, and decided. So I will not increase this to a full size, because not the entire picture is visible. But if you're interested in certain details of your picture, you can always click onto it, and it will increase. So this zoom image, if you add another large image that's too large, you will have this zooming functionality additionally is where you can just yeah inspect some certain parts of the image or visit the entire image so this is just automatically included so and last part of yeah Still on that note, can you define uh, the dimensions that you want yeah the this is not possible in markdown unfortunately but you can either use HTML if you want to, to import an image, but we added another possibility. So this is an HTML comments. This will be not visible into within a markdown document. It's just uh, not interpreted, but you can use something like, yeah, it's not a beautiful solution, but you can, like an HTML, uh, use any kind of styling. So I can use something like uh, with, uh, probably like 300 pixels oops so I won't add this to the block so like in this case so I'm sorry and you can or you make it like 100% but you define a max width of 400 pixels or centimeters or depending on what it is so it will uh, shrink depending or increase the size depending of the uh, uh, yeah of the screen resolution that you're using to it uh, otherwise it will stop it's just like but this is a, actually something it's nice to have but yeah you can you can use it if you want to you can restyle everything just to, but we won't go that deep into uh, this for the moment so I'm lost at the, the images. Sorry? I'm lost around how you talked about the images. I just uh sorry, you mean uh, how I imported yeah. them? How how were you able to put the logo like the pictures, the images to get the uh, so uh, this is the uh, alt text or the name in this case of the image. Mm -hmm. Then there is in uh, parentheses the URL of the image, and then there is like the subtitle or the caption that you give to the image. Again, and the difference is this is a link and exclamation mark. This is uh, referring to an other resource, but I want to embed this, so I can copy this also into the.
to here so you can try so this is just a basic difference a name or an old information the URL and this is title is actually optional and you can of course include all URLs with varying names from the back and if you have uh, within your project but don't, uh, that's not working within the live editor mm -hmm. you just can refer to you skip this part but relative to my URL uh, there is an image folder or the image is called like this and you don't add some HTTP or something to it just uh, a reference to the local you want to embed this? Or? so this is electrical guitar I'll copy this. Uh, just try to the uh, image. So all text. Leave it as this. I remove the image URL and place your URL into this. And there is the image of the guitar. So we had some caption and yeah, we do. Should I? I place this back into the. So in the last part, and then we are done with markdown. So, but uh, this is probably nice. Um, and then we're doing this uh, multimedia stuff, uh, the Lia script specific issues, tables. So if you want to define a table in Markdown, that's actually quite, or I don't know an easier way uh, for doing this. As you can see, it's just like, as you write this down, this is the structure of your table, and this is rendered accordingly. So just like, the first line is just the head of the table, and in the second line, uh, you just define those, the or you can say the orientation. So if I want to have, uh, it's uh, the orientation is left-handed or something like this by default, but if you add those colons on both sides, it will be centered, and if you add just the colon to the right side, it will put be put on the right, so you can also add this colon on the other side. Uh, so it will be shown in the other way on the other way and it doesn't care about the if there's some table it's not beautifully uh, displayed actually so it doesn't uh, make a change we are so this is just a markdown table you can add as many uh, options as you want to I simply copy and paste this so we have a double the table so in Leo script you can also yeah there's a nice little feature to have you can just like uh, sort this uh, your table accordingly uh, but we, what we also did so was the idea if you have a table it's in some cases might be representing some kind of data right mm -hmm. so if I add some numbers or something like to it so in this case it doesn't read any numbers so you can add just add some spaces uh, to it so it will interpret this uh, try to find out okay there's a number so because it's uh, just parses some part of the uh, rows actually and then it will try to display based on this data what might be the appropriate uh, visualization for this type of data so there's uh, no values in here but only there so probably this might be something like a group uh, and the easiest way to represent this okay, amount of dollars or something is like in a bar chart. So this is one way. If you go to the Lia script documentation, um, Lia script.io, there is this link to the documentation, which is a self-explaining Lia script course. Hopefully, search for tables so you can see 
this table is rendered as a uh, some line chart. Uh, box plot, we had the box plot already. Uh, this one is a pie chart if you want to have it like this. If you look at the code, I simply go to the raw file. Tables actually, it does nothing more as interpret those specific uh, pieces or this uh, table that you have into it. Just like this might be a line chart actually, and it's presenting it in the same way. Uh, this might be a bar chart because uh, the first one does not have any data. It might be groups uh, concerned to the uh, depending on the weight, kilogram, and lifespan. But what you can also do is probably like a pie chart uh, would be just a one liner of a table. So there's just like one group and how could I organize this? But you can also overwrite the styles. I want to have my data uh, in this probably visualization. And there's what's interesting. So you can, I want to have as a data type as a heat map. So I simply copy and paste this. You can try this out within your editor where is mine so I switch I'll change this table into another one so I'll decrease the so it's more visible like in this and you get something like a heat map which you can inspect organize filter as directly shown can go back to the values, reorganize them according to don't know the temperature in November. Change the heat up and the appearance of the heat map changes. So mm -hmm. you can just like play around with your data. You provide your the actually data of your measurements and the visualization is generated automatically. It's not that you get a picture uh, where the actually data is lost afterwards. So all that people see is the image, which might look quite nice, but the data I want to play around or experiment with is, is lost. And this is a way just to automatically probably identify a nice visualization for your data. So just... Uh, we ask them to find an appropriate diagram style to illustrate the major contribution of the data set, the outcome of the data set. And as I explained, this hybrid representation, tabular structure and diagram, are close to each other. It's not necessary to run a separate program to provide an image, a diagram that cannot be manipulated afterwards. So we have an interactive exploration tool. Yeah, this kind, the data looks a bit different, but it's like a matrix uh, where the different points map to the ABC, ABC, and this can be probably represented as a relation graph or something like this. So we are now, I think we can make a break, right? So this was a markdown part. <laughs> I hope it's not uh, uh, too much, but that you can just always have a look at the course that you have created now, just change it and uh, experiment with this. And in the next section, we will add some little script specific features, uh, like we will working with multimedia data, quizzes, uh, just uh, to name a few, we'll show this, how to get surveys, and uh, at the end, how you can make your presentation actually like a narrative presentation. So uh, how to add, as you've seen it at the beginning, how you can add uh, those spoken out uh, text, uh, which part uh, should be visible at what animation step. And this is actually then the little script part after the lunch. And then we will make a sh yeah to the GitHub, how yeah. can you get more professional with uh, another 
editor uh, on the GitHub platform and what this version management actually brings to you, what benefits it has if you cooperate with multiple author, authors probably and to organize your educational content. Questions? Yeah, questions so far. No, there is no, uh, actually every markdown, the script is like a superset of markdown, so every markdown piece is also a valid Lea script code, but Lea script just uh, reinterprets some stuff a bit differently, so mark, so in the base, is, it's always markdown, if you can write plain markdown, it should be visualized as a also a Lea script course, but if you want to add specifically a script features like quizzes or uh, text-to-speech output, this would be readable within the Markdown document, but it won't display it in the same way or so. A nice example are the tabular mm -hmm. structures. This is a traditional Markdown tabular representation, and if you switch, please, to the table. Da, what do you mean? No, to the table in ah. the Werner version. That's a opportunity of Markdown, it provides a well, no, no, very nice uh, technical structure in the HTML format. Yeah. But that's all. Um, as Andrew already explained, we added many features to this technical structure. It's not just a representation, it allows, for instance, sorting values. It allows to represent um, the information in a in the different types of diagrams to adapt the content to add additional information. There are many opportunities you see you saw in the documentation to include notations, additional setups and these parameters. But we would like to uh, <coughs> avoid to go into, into the detail. Means we have a basic idea of markdown extended with the DL script to have a better learning experience, to explore data set um, in, a, in different ways. So mm. but if you're using Moodle, probably you can use the same syntax that you've learned so far with Markdown and uh, just open the uh, Markdown editor and write in your content sections, add links to your local documents, add images, tables, block quotes. This is the same syntax as in uh, your Moodle Markdown editor or as in a lot of other uh, uh, editing software and some parts also in WhatsApp as you as you have seen it. Yep. Yes, thank you so much. Um, so we came in as told it, but we're trying to catch up. Thank you for your support. I was just trying to find out um, I'm a music teacher. Uh, a music teacher? Yeah. Ah then you have missed the introduction. Music teacher of teachers. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to find out if uh, the markdown dialect can accommodate uh, music symbols because we use a lot of symbols. Yeah. Signs and symbols for musical have to import them from somewhere and then bring them. So then we will uh, get out. So we have like different organizations for our content, and one is like Lea Template, so GitHub slash Lea Template. My personal uh, project are stored on uh, GitHub slash Andre minus Dietrich. So, and this is like a template. So where we add some kind, so this is what we will learn within the, uh, the next section on the next part. And there we have this ABC notation. So probably a few heard of this. Yeah. And because, um, sorry to interrupt you, uh, we use a lot of symbols like the mathematics people because we have a lot of connection with math. Yeah, so if you have a specific library in mind that's not already included, we can create a new uh, library that implements or imports those specific symbols. Yes, yeah. So and we did the same probably for the ABC notation. So ABC is not part of the standard Lea script syntax, but we have this self-explaining course, as we hope to. Mm -hmm. So you can, it explains how to add this functionality that's imported, uh, added in here. So we will do this afterwards and we'll show you. Uh, but this is just like 
This document is an entire self-explaining course about the functionality. Uh, if you want to use uh, this ABC uh, notation, you can open this from within here. So it will point only to this markdown document. So script course slash question mark, the markdown document. And then you can use something like this one. So this is the code. Yeah, so if you add this to your markdown of after you have imported this uh, you will generate something like this and you can make it also playable so and you can uh, add some additional features if you want to play around with it or you can i showed this earlier so you can make editable code so in this abc notation yeah so it's a bit complicated, I don't know what it means actually, but as we did it before, you can edit this. I just uh, re-execute this. The code somehow changes, I don't know yes. what, yeah, the key yeah, what the notes is, but if you... Yeah. So this is actually... Yeah. There are some <laughs> similar to our programming courses, so we are able to yeah. develop new pieces of code or pieces of music mm -hmm. with the student commonly. And so they are much closer to the so material than in the traditional. There are also some like in uh, was it chemistry or I don't know how it was called, algebra. Uh, probably I don't know. This might be interesting. This is the same uh, course or important it describes. Of course, it's not visible in here. Uh, but oh, I didn't add this. It's just an example. This, this is a point we will address in the afternoon, where we present some plugins provided by the yes, community. Yes, yes. So the traditional formats diagram, table, piece of code, or something like uh, other else, cover as many um, lecture contents. But in many cases, the teachers need some specific um, elements that should be integrated. And so one of them are hieroglyphs, um, um, representation, or yeah. music, or some from the chemistry, our chemistry department asked for a model for atoms and molecules for visualizing their structure and certain aspects of this implementation. Mm. The templates, it's just wait a second, mermaid, four repositories. These are all periodic periodic yeah, table? Yeah, the periodic no, is it periodic the table? Scalpel. And you see there's a list to some of Kekule, them this was uh, a chemical uh, extension where you can just write formulas or molecules within this structure and then if everything works well. This is big. Big so you can actually create, use this entire to create this one, uh, but also to create a so this is the code above for a three-dimensional structure. So you can not only code, I don't know. Uh, so you can like add for programming or for other purposes, like those features of there's a library available or a service somewhere within the internet. We can add this or make a, a template, a library that you can import multiple times within your courses, different courses, you don't have to re-implement this by your own and you can reuse this functionality. Yep. I am Robert, I'm also his colleague and teacher. I'm a teacher this year to physics. So, I, my brief question is, can we use this markdown to write a dissertation? Uh, basically, I, I know that uh, Markdown actually is used also. There are different, uh, like you can say, dialects. Uh, and I, a colleague of us is also such a lang uh, Markdown enthusiast that he uh, wrote also his thesis with Markdown, but then probably not with, 
I don't know if Leah script is the uh, right choice. It's more, uh, the idea is more to have online courses, not uh, probably not a dissertation, but it depends. I mean, just like if it's too much text, it will display it too, but uh, yeah, I don't know, it might be complicated, but. Some of the students in, in our, at our university write down the actual content in Markdown and transfer the result afterwards to Latin uh, to avoid thinking about certain annotations of Latin specific commands. Mm -hmm. um, and afterwards, if they finish the um, meaningful words, <laughs> then they switch to yeah. nice looking PDFs based on Latin. Well, this is just like their yeah. Markdown as a standard, so there are other Pandoc or other standards where you can translate your Markdown document into something else, into a Word document. So like, yeah, that's like my second question. Would that be us? Would that you can convert the output to PDF? Yeah. Yes, that's a bit. We, um, later we will take a view to the exporting functionalities uh, as a specific small tool that provides um, LaTeX or PDFs in these elements. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.